Welcome back to Backyard Builds, guys. We are back on the Commodore today. Um, I've actually, between previous episode and this episode, I've made up a heap of cardboard templates. Also cut all the boot floor out of the car. Um, cut the spare wheel floor out, cut this other side out. So, yep, today we're gonna make up all the replacement pieces of sheet metal to go in there. I've already made up all the cardboard templates, like I said. Um, a little bit of tweaking, playing around. We might even do some bead rolling in some of them. So, yeah. This is what we're gonna make up. We have, that's our inner beaver panel. That is part of the spare wheel delete. So that actually goes to the body on the passenger side. We have our driver's side, sorry. Driver's side wheel tub infill. This goes between the body and the inner wheel tub. Um, that's just a fill piece, obviously, because even the standard or the tub we bought from McDonald Bros wouldn't fit. Um, so that's just going to be a filler piece. And then we have this piece. This was driver's side floor. Um, it just looked a bit ugly, and I thought it could make I could make it look a lot better. So this is also going to be just filling in another little piece um, from the earth, from the ground, um, and that one goes in there. So let's get into it. Um, get some sheet out, get it on the guillotine, cut it up. absolute cats and dogs here today um, so if the noise is a bit average my apologies um, <clears throat> this piece here needs a funky S pump shape cut in it obviously you can't do that in the guillotine cut the straight line this is a small little shear I bought from Heron Forbes um, nothing fancy about it Perfect for cutting 1.2 or 1.1 mil in this case. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use it to cut along this edge. Um, it might seem like I'm struggling with it a little bit, but that's because I'm doing it on my own. But I'll make do and I'll get there. So, yeah, all it is. It's like a set of metal scissors. Once it starts, wrench it in the corner. You can just cut along the line like that. Back on track. Stop there. Try and cut that off. So it's out of my way. Probably not. Alright, come back in a second. So I just had a little brainwave. Um, I bought a set of T-slot clamps when I actually bought this and by fluke chance I reckon they're going to fit in there nicely. There's also two holes in the back of this. I reckon two of those I might be able to clamp that there and away I go. So I'm going to put that together for a sec.
Well, that's given me a nice strong work hold. So, to continue on what I was doing before. Oh, that's much easier. Look at that, but yours. It's also known as a throatless shear. Um, the shear itself doesn't kind of get in the way as you're cutting, which is good. And it allows you to turn the workpiece as you go. And cuts like that. So it cuts pretty well. It cuts pretty nice actually. Um, I'll probably just hit that on the pedestal just to give it a nice shape tidy it up and then on to the next piece so yeah here we go Sorry about the noise, again, it is absolutely raining like crazy out here. But, when I made these CAD templates, I put a little fold on them. I just did that by hand, so it was nothing super hard. All I want to do now is put that on the sheet metal. So I know roughly the fold that I wanted, about 20 mil, 20, we're going to call it 20. So instead of me just marking that on there, I'm going to do it the proper way. Now I'm going to make sure I've got it going the right way, that's folding up, yeah. Set the square to what you want. Don't, it's going to sound controversial, don't set the square to what the markings say. Because you've got to think about the thickness of your pen or your texture. It all, it all correlates. So we've got that one marked. This one has two folds. So this one again forms like a Z shape. Um, fold at the bottom, fold at the top. We've got 15 on the bottom, 20 on the top. So that's going that way. That one over. 20 on this side. Now that one's going that way. 15 on the bottom. There. Again, setting square for the mark. Let's go over and fold these two now. Alright, so I'm going to do this one this way, which means having the small part of the fold towards me. Let me try and line that up as best I can with one hand. It's about there. And I'm just going to get one of these. Good. Put that on the ground for a second. Looks good. So, just a little bit over. Just give it a little bump. Just 
pull it back a little bit. This one's going to need to be flipped over. I'm not sure how well it's going to go. Let's put it there. Oh, I can get it flipped over. Okay, that's good. Put it back in for the 20 mil fold. There. Shoulders not in the way of that. That one goes in there. A little bit better now. I'll just sand a little bit with that and I'll pull that in, tack that off there. Pretty much flush with the bottom of the car. So that'll be good there. And this one is supposed to fit in there. Pretty close. In fairness, I think I need to take a lick off the side of here. Pulling the bits around. Should get in position. Right. Let's see how the other side is. Just like that. That isn't going to take. That's not going to take anything to go in. That one's pretty sweet. Meets up nicely with the tub and everything. It's about there, I think. In memory. Pretty good. Now the next piece. Which is this funky one. It goes in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go roll that a little bit so it matches the tub and then we're going to see how it fits.
So this little inner beaver panel, I decided it needed a little bit of a curve in it. Actually went slightly the wrong way. All right, I've just swapped the stretching dies over for shrinking dies. It's a little bit nice up, and it needs a bit of a curve on the bottom. Just to match the rear of that beaver panel in the car, I think. somewhere in the ballpark so all these dies do we've spoken about them before they either move together or they push apart so when you clamp the two together they either close up or they push away shrinking the edge or stretching the edge let's go see what that's like in the car now I've already got that piece clamped in there. That matches way better. Okay, in there. All right, might be time to get the welder out. Tack those couple of bits together. Put some copper primer on here and there. I don't know if you can see it viewers, but this beaver panel is a little bit slash a lot rusty. So before I can secure that down there, I need to fix that. There's no way, other way about it. It's toast. The only reason for it is all that seam seal was sitting on top of it and water just got trapped in there. Pretty common spot in the spare wheel floor, so it is what it is. Yeah. That one needs to go in there. And then there'll be a piece to go over the top of that. It'll probably look something. Probably get some sort of bead in it. And yeah, don't worry about it not actually landing on anything there. I'm gonna fold up an angle, the full length of this I think. So that whole piece actually has something to sit on. It just makes the whole rear floor looks a bit more symmetrical. And then there'll be a big rear panel in there for the fuel cell to sit on. So let's get some copper primer. And the welder. Might even clean up some of the paint off there so I can weld that onto that. Let's do it. So off camera stretch in this panel, put two beads in it, and fits up pretty nicely in there. Not too much of a gap down the back there, but that's alright. Uh, you can probably see I just marked it in texture in the wheel arch there. What I need to do now is get in there with a the grinder and clean as much of that road grime off. Uh, just give you a nice clean surface to weld to in a minute. So, yeah, back on the grinder. Where's Zach when you need him?
there you have it guys that is one piece in there just fold it up a 25 by 25 mil angle so a heap of holes in it just so i can plug weld it to the rail because there's actually no lip on this side originally because spare wheel was there i've got that piece all prepped ready to go copper primed everything where i'm going to weld between also got this piece ready to go over that rust there um, we're gonna get the welder out and like a bit of glue on it so yeah let's get to it Just thought I'd share with you viewers something I've been doing a bit more learning on and that is getting more stretch into my panels so just marking a, a line there where it actually contacts the lower wheel so before I bead roll it I'm going to stretch where I want those beads <coughs> So I've been doing, like I said, a lot of reading and people obviously always recommend pre-stretch but there was no one that could tell me how much and it was obviously a sort of a calculated guess um, but I watched one video, it was really informative it said use the the anvil with the most amount of crown in it so I've got my smallest, or most domed wheel in the English wheel at the moment and he said actually put a lot of pressure on it so this is more pressure than I would used for just about anything it's a lot of force you sort of see it's just starting to rub that line out so all I want to do is just get a good amount of stretch where that line is on it so it's a bit harder the harder it goes the more stretch I'll get just gonna spin it around so I can do a bit more on the other end and like I said there is no exact amount Everyone just sort of said, put as much as you can in with what you've got. So that's what I'm going to do. Right, uh, let's undo that. Now, as you can see, there's quite a lot of crown in that panel now. So I've put a lot of stretch in here and here, which is good, because it means when I put it into the bead roller in a second, it's gonna push all that material back down and it should flatten a lot of this out. So I'm just gonna go mark my lines back out again so I can set up my stop 
and then we're going to bait roll them. So we've got the gate set, pieces clamped, we are just past starting position, so we can do one pass all the way down, we'll go down a turn, we'll do one pass coming all the way back. There's still quite a bit of crown in that panel. What I might do is drop it into the wheel now and just wheel some of that out. So yeah, that's gonna give us our basic shape for that spare wheel delete. Righto. So, I've actually remade that panel. That one there just had way too much crown on it. That was my fault. Uh, remade this one, just wheeled it less, and basically it's just gonna sit in there nicely. So I'm just gonna go underneath now, and mark out where that crap is. That'll give me a point so I know where to put all my holes for the spot welds. And then we'll take it in and make it look like that one. There we have it folks, that is our spare wheel delete, pretty close and very similar to driver's side. Um, that'll about do us for today, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the little bell for the notifications so when a new episode pops up you're the first to watch it. Up next in this VL will be setting up that diff, get them the pinion angles right. Got them out coil overs in here. We've also got to change the two lower link arm mounts. And once we've got that set, we'll work out the tin work to cover all that up and then do the area where the fuel tank will go. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Backyard Builds.